Hello everybody, it's Sarah and today's video is going to be me trying to make the best of a fuck up that happened to me which is a few days ago I filmed the Black Book Challenge by Chessie from Bowties and Books who created the challenge for Blackathon and Black History Month I believe last year. And so since Black History Month has once again come around, since it is in fact a yearly event, what a surprise, I know, uh, and you know, it's something that while it's not as big as in the US, we also do have events surrounding Black History Month in Austria here. I decided that this month I haven't done a video of this type before. I decided that this year I wanted to sit down and recommend to you my favorite books written by black authors. However, I thought that if I just sat down and filmed the straight up recommendations video, I would just talk about the same books that I always talk about, which would be kind of boring. So I was looking for a tag or a challenge where I could use the prompt to give me inspiration to maybe talk about some books that I don't usually talk about. And I decided on the Black Book Challenge because it's a bookish scavenger hunt and I haven't done one in a while. So I thought it'd be fun. And I filmed it and my files corrupted. And so now I was sitting here and I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Scavenger hunts, bookish scavenger hunts are only fun if you don't already know the prompts, if you don't already know which books you're gonna pick. And so I decided that instead of redoing the whole thing, I still have the books out here that I picked because I was too lazy to put them away. And so I'm just gonna go through the prompts without the exciting scavenger hunt part. And I'm just gonna take the chance, because I'm not on a timer, to tell you a bit more about each book and why I enjoyed each book. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. But before that, I thought I'd still regardless tell you how I did in the scavenger hunt. You're just gonna have to believe me without proof. I think I took almost 16 minutes to find the books that I had on my shelves. Part of the reason why it took me so long is because I couldn't shut up in between the prompts and I felt like I, you know, had to say something about each book, so <laughs> that was fun. And then in terms of the prompts, there's 19 in total. I definitely covered 13 of the prompts. There's three prompts where I would say I'll let you in the comments decide if it counts or not. And then there's three more prompts where I did not find a book. But Yes, let's get into the actual books now. The first prompt was a book that has won awards or accolades and for that I picked out The First Woman by Jennifer Nansumbuga Makumbi, which has won the Chalak Prize 2021, which I believe is an African literature prize, if I'm not completely wrong. And it's by a Ugandan author. The reason why I picked this out was mostly just because obviously it has won a prize and it first came to mind because it's on my current TBR. I wanted to get to it this month. I probably will not, to be honest, because <laughs> I have to write a 20-page essay uh, in the next two weeks. So yeah, I, I don't want to put any more big books that aren't rereads on my TBR <laughs> this year month. And so because I have not read this yet, I decided to put a second book out there for this prompt, even though I didn't pick it in my actual challenge. And that is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, which won the Booker Prize in 2019, was one of the winners, in my opinion, deserved to be the only winner. But let bygones be bygones, I guess. And this one is a story where we follow six or eight different characters. I don't remember the exact number anymore. And in each chapter we follow a different character. We kind of learn about their lives a little bit. And in the end it seems like a lot of their lives are actually very intertwined with each other. And so yes, I absolutely love this when I read this. I believe it was one of my favorite books in 2019. And I just really like the writing style of this book as well. The second prompt was a book with a disabled or neurodivergent protagonist. And I have to be honest, I think this was probably one of the prompts that I had the hardest time finding a book for. But then I remembered that the main character of The Broken Kingdoms, which is the second book in the Inheritance trilogy, is in fact blind. And so, yes, 
The second book, I believe, also was my favorite book in the trilogy. I don't remember if it was the second or the first one anymore, to be honest, because I just love the entire trilogy as a whole so much. We do follow different characters in each book, although there are some side characters that are overlapping and the whole thing is set in a world where there's basically gods walking among mortals. And at the very beginning of the first book, these gods are enslaved to do the bidding of the ruling family of the Thousand Kingdoms, which is what the first book is called. And yes, so in the second book we follow a blind main character who I really, really loved, I have to be honest. So yes, definitely, definitely can recommend this trilogy. Prompt number three was an author whose first name begins with an M, R or Z and actually I think this one was the one that I had the hardest time with and I found exactly one book by a black author if I'm not wrong yeah I found exactly one book by an author uh, with MRO set as the first letter in the first name and that was Rebecca Rowan Horse with Black Sun. Rebecca Rowan Horse is an African-American as well as an indigenous author so she is of mixed heritage and Black Sun is the first book in a trilogy which is called Between Earth and Sky which is inspired by the cultures of the pre-Columbian Americas. This was one of my favorite books of 2020. I absolutely absolutely loved it so much. I also love the cover so much of this one. It's so gorgeous. And I cannot wait for the second book, which will be published in April, if I'm not wrong. So prompt number four was a book not set in the US or the UK, which I actually, while I was doing the challenge, in the heat of the challenge, misunderstood. And I took a book written by an author, not from the US or the UK. So I took The Wizard of the Crow, whose author is from Kenya. And this actually originally was not written in English. However, it was the author himself who translated the book. This is technically not set in the US or the UK, this is set in Africa, however it is made up in the made-up country of Aburidia. And so yes, I decided that additionally to this book I would also tell you some more other books as well. There's not that much I can say about this and it's really hard to summarize, so I can just say that I would really recommend this and I definitely understand why it is considered one of the modern classics of African literature. So I actually decided to tell you very quickly about three more books for this prompt. The first one technically isn't set outside the US or the UK because I don't think we're ever really told where it's set and I believe it might also be set, you know, somewhere made up, I guess but it's also by an author who is not from the US or the UK and that is Redemption in Indigo by Karen Lord who is a Caribbean author from Barbados and in this one we follow a very calm woman who I absolutely love as she kind of takes it up with a trickster type spirit being and so yeah very much enjoyed this book can highly recommend it the second book is a book that is set outside the US and the UK, however it is set within Europe and that is At Night All Blood is Black by David Diop, who is a Senegalese French author. He was born in France but has lived and grown up in Senegal and this one is the story of a black man during World War One. The reason why I wanted to recommend this is because obviously while there's a lot of literature out there about the two world wars, more about the second world war than the first world war, it is as so many parts of history often a very whitewashed part of history and so I decided to share this little book which I very much enjoyed. Obviously it's translated from French though so it is a translation. Also this won the International Booker Prize in 2021 so I guess <laughs> this would also have counted for the first prompt. And then the last one I have is Black Sunday by Tola Rotimi Abraham which is set in Lagos in Nigeria and in this one we follow the story of two sisters as they grow up and as their lives 
apart and come back together as well. And I also really enjoyed this one when I read it. Prompt number five, and I feel like I need to speed it up because this is already going on for way too long and we're only at prompt number five, is featuring a central queer romance. And for that one, I chose The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. Although I'm not 100% sure if I would classify the couple in this as a romance because I don't necessarily think they should end up together. Uh, but this I would call decolonial fantasy. It's one of many fantasy books that we get now that is kind of challenging colonial narratives that we grow up with, which was what I really enjoyed here. However, the romance is between one of the colonized, a conscript who has been taken from her country as a young child, and also the heir to the country that has, you know, robbed her <laughs> from her own country. So the heir to the colonizers, basically. But I have to be honest, I do really enjoy the dynamic between the two. I especially enjoy, you know, Turenne, who is the colonized person's split loyalties between, you know, the, the attachment or the feelings that she now feels for Luca, who is the colonizer, the feelings that she feels for her fellow conscripts, and also the feelings that she now starts to develop for the rebels of her country, for the people she has been taken from and who she never got to know because of that. And so yes, that is what I think is the most interesting part about this book, to be honest. Prompt number six was a book by a deceased author and for that I chose Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, which is a modern queer black classic. It is set in Paris and we follow David who is an American living in Paris currently as he falls in love with Giovanni in Giovanni's room. And yes, this one was very depressing but I think it was depressing in a good way. I cannot quite remember but I'm pretty sure it was depressing in a good way. Prompt number seven is a book that can be classified into multiple genres and for that one this is the only book that I chose for a prompt where I would say I didn't fully enjoy the book as much as I could have enjoyed the book. However, I still kept it because I still think that it's ultimately a good book. It just wasn't 100% for me. And that was The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk, which I would classify as a fantasy romance. I really enjoyed the romance aspect of this book. I also especially enjoyed the love interest because the love interest doesn't start out as the perfect person. Like he's a good person from the very beginning, but he has quite a few flaws and faults as well. And I do enjoy that we get to see development in his character throughout the novel. The part that I didn't enjoy all too much in this book was the feminism in this book, which I felt was just really obvious, really on the nose, and not really the type of feminist discussions that I enjoy or how I enjoy reading them in my books, even though I do think there were important discussions in here like bodily autonomy and so on. But yes, fantasy and romance, so that is why I chose it for this prompt. Prompt number eight was a debut novel and I have to be honest, I had such a hard time with this one because I do not pay attention whether or not a book is a debut or not. I just find it out once I go looking for the back catalog of an author and it doesn't exist. But I ended up googling one of the books and it ended up being a debut novel. It's sadly a book that I also haven't read yet, but I have Homegoing by Ya Gyasi, which if I remember correctly, this is a generational story. And so yes, another book that I got for Christmas that I didn't get around to reading yet, but that I am very, very excited to read. Prompt number nine was a sequel, which I did not think I would have a hard time with until I realized that I only have sequels by N.K. Jemisin on my shelves. Which I guess is fine because she's like one of my top five favorite authors of all time currently anyway. But I wanted to get through this challenge also without doubling up on books or authors. But I guess that's an excuse for me to once again talk about my favorite book by N.K. Jemisin. And that is The Shadowed Sun, which is the second book in the Dreamblood duology, which is a fantasy series set in a world where you have dream magic, where you can use dream energy to heal and to kill and stuff. 
And the second book is set 10 years, I believe, after the stuff that happens in the first book. So it's not a direct sequel, but it's kind of a book following different characters, but dealing with the fallout from everything that happened in the first book. And I just really, really love this. I love the world building in this because yay to matrilinear societies. I love when we get to see matrilinear patriarchal societies because it's something that we don't often get to see authors playing around with lineages and with like matriarchies, patriarchies, egalitarian societies and you know mixing those things up. So it's just something that I really enjoyed. And aside from that, I just also love the characters in this book so much. I love the development they go through and I could just gush about this for so long right now, but this video is already really long, so let's move on. Number 10 is a work of Afrofuturism or speculative fiction and for that I chose Who Fears Death by Nidhi Okorafor, who is of course one of the most well-known representatives of Afrofuturism currently writing. In this one we are set in a futuristic Africa and um... So once again, it's just too hard to describe the book. It would take me too long to get into it. But we follow our main character as she tries to go on a mission um, that is important for her people, basically. And so, yes, I absolutely loved this when I read it. I can also really recommend the audiobook. I really enjoyed it. Like, I read parts of it on audiobook and I just absolutely loved it. Also, Who Fears Death is just one of those books. I have by now seen like four or five different covers for this book and all of them are just so unspeakably gorgeous. I love them. Prompt number 11, a book that has received an adaptation. For that I went with The Color Purple by Alice Walker, which is another black queer modern classic. And this one I also read in German, however I do at some point want to get an English copy of this and read it in English because I think that's just gonna change a lot of the narrative and I think the way this is written it's probably the best to read it in English and not in a translation because I think especially in terms of the dialogue maybe that would also change some things. Just, just what I assume how this book would be written in English. But yeah, really enjoyed it, recordless. Problem number 12 is a short story collection and this is the first one where I'm like, you're gonna have to decide if I cheated or not because I don't do short story collections. I don't do short story collections unless they're connected to a series that I already love and just kind of flesh out the world a bit more. And so what I picked up was the African Trilogy by Tino Achebe, which is Things Fall Apart, No Longer at Ease and Arrow of God, which is a series of three novellas, basically. So not really a short story collection, it's a collection of three shorter stories. <laughs> so yeah, I really enjoyed this. I especially enjoyed the first book, which was Things Fall Apart. The other two I enjoyed as well, but a bit less. So that first one is the one that I would really recommend you pick up. And so, yeah, you decide whether this counts or not. <laughs> prompt number 13 is a story that is told in verse or a work of poetry. And this is the first prompt that I don't have anything for that. However, that's just basically because I don't read poetry. I don't do poetry. It's just not something that necessarily interests me. I have exactly one poetry book, which is a German one, which I still need to get through. Uh, but yeah, so I'm not too beat up about it that I don't have a book for this prompt. Prompt number 14 is trans-binary or non-binary character and for that I chose Master of Poisons by Andrea Hairston, where there's multiple characters that are described as being neither male or female, at least one of them being a POV character. I'm not really sure if I would want to call them non-binary characters. Prompt number 14 is trans-binary or non-binary character and for that I chose Master of Poisons by Andrea Hairston, which has multiple characters that are described as being neither male or female. Actually, they're not even described yet. It's like a title that they get that is never described in the book what that exactly is and then in the glossary you get like neither male or female, but I really like 
the way it's dealt with within the book because it's that natural that you don't even need to describe what it is. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that. And so there's multiple characters that identify as this identity and at least one of them is a POV character. Prompt number 15 is the second prompt I didn't have anything for and that is liter literature contemporary or non-fiction centering a fat individual. And since I don't read contemporaries and since I don't often read non-fiction and none of my literature focuses on a fat individual, I sadly do not have anything for this prompt. Prompt number 16 was the third prompt that I don't have anything for and that was a book about Black Lives Matter or Black Liberation and I think I might have some books here that broadly deal with those themes but I definitely don't have any books that for example center Black Lives Matter specifically and I think maybe part of that reason might be because when it comes to literary fiction I usually reach for non-US authors so those themes in a lot of books are dealt with differently than what I see when I read the backs of books by American authors. Uh, but yeah, I definitely plan on looking up some lists of books and to try to find some books with these themes. Number 17 is a book with a silly, 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 kooky or nerdy main character. This one's the second prompt where I'm like, you decide if I got it or not, because once again, silly, kooky or nerdy main character sounds like something you'd find more so in YA or non-fiction, not non-fiction, uh, contemporary fiction, which are two genres that I don't read. And so I decided that maybe Son of the Storm by Suye Davis Okongboa, because the main character is quite an intellectual character. I don't know if that counts as nerdy though, so uh, yeah. You decide if this book counts for this prompt. This is another adult high fantasy that is inspired by different African cultures, although primarily I believe Nigerian cultures because that is where the author is originally from, if I'm not completely mistaken. So I just looked in the back and who'd have thought I was right? Sometimes I feel like I'm talking out of my ass because I feel like I read something once somewhere or heard something once somewhere and then I'm too lazy to look it up again. But in this case I was right, although not quite it's not necessarily strictly inspired by Nigeria, obviously, but by the Benin Kingdom, which at the time of its existence took up, I think, two thirds of Nigeria until Benin City, the capital of the kingdom, was raised by the British in 1883-77. I read a book about that, like, literally a few months ago in November, but I'm so bad with dates. But yeah. The British once again did their British thing and uh, since then the treasures of Benin City have been scattered around the world. Most remarkably in the British Museum, obviously. So yes, but definitely enjoy the book and can highly recommend it. Number 18 is a work of non-fiction for which I decided to go with the book I am currently reading, which is Necropolitics by Achille Mbembe. This is a series of essays on necropolitics, which necropolitics basically is how certain people around the world have inadvertently been given the status of the living dead, basically. And so what role democracies, uh, politics, racism, wars and so on play within necropolitics. And as you can see, uh, I'm about 80 pages into it. Yeah, 80 pages into it. And as you can see, I have already tapped it up quite a bit, very much. I'm already enjoying it is the wrong way to put it. I am finding it enlightening. Is that a better way to put it? Also, Achille Mbembe is an author from Cameroon. And the last prompt, prompt number 19, is one where I'm once again, I'm like, should I count it or not? because that was an author with a new release coming soon and I am bad at new releases. So yeah, literally the only thing I could think about was The Fevered Star by Rebecca Roanhorse, but I already picked 
Black Sun for another prompt, so I didn't want to pick that. Andrea Hairston had a novella which is called Redwood and Wildfire come out at the beginning of February. That was a republication. Then there was this one short story collection, but that's like way off in the future and comes out like in autumn, I think in November, and I forgot the name of it. So yeah, I'm just really bad at remembering <laughs> which uh, what's it called? New releases come out when? Which is why I have my list to remind me. But yeah, I don't know. So yeah, that was it for this video, which I believe is gonna be very long. But also, I hope you got tons of new recommendations. I hope you wanna pick up some of these books. Tell me in the comments down below if you do. Tell me also in the comments down below if you have read any of these books what are your thoughts on them if you enjoyed this video maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing all links to my social media as well as to my book club of queens which is in valkyries where we read one adult high fantasy book written by a woman or genderqueer person per month will be left linked down below so go and check those out as well and i hope i'll see you very soon bye